Do not be anxious. And now what does Jesus list there as that which, about which we are so often worrying? Well, what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? Now view that big picture. How are we going to provide? How are we going to pay the bills? Uh, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about that? So bodily and material necessities are something about which we worry. The future. He says, take no thought for the morrow. And there Jesus puts his finger right on something that is, is very n- near to us, namely worrying and being anxious about the future. Instead of living today, trusting God according to the will God has for us and our station and calling, we are worrying and we're trying to live the morrow. So not only do we have the burdens of one day on our shoulders now, but the burdens of a whole future that we're trying to handle in, in the present. And so we are anxious about the future. Parents worry about their children to the point of anxiety, to the point of if this is how bad it is right now in the world, what is it going to be like when our children grow up? What are they going to have to face? What pressures, what persecution, what tribulation, what threats? Even children are not immune from the kind of worry and anxiety that the Apostle prohibits here. And in this increasingly technological age, with, all, with social media, cell phones, and all of that, that aggravates worries and anxieties even with regard to children, so that children are not immune from, from this kind of thing. Well, what's the result of that? Troubled hearts, troubled minds, no peace, nagging thoughts that you can't shake. Sometimes you can hardly take a step forward. It's that paralyzing. Well, the apostle understands, the inspired apostle understands that we face things that can be the occasion of worry and anxiety. He knew the Philippians had that before them. He knows, and, and God, through the apostle, writes this word for us now in our own particular circumstances of life. And he says, be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious about anything. Now again, we need to clarify and understand what exactly he means there. Be careful for nothing does not mean do not be diligent, do not be prudent, Be careful for nothing does not forbid a kind of prudent uh, forethought with regard to things that that we're going to face in the future, etc. That's wisdom, that's prudence for someone to assess the things that he's going to have to experience. Neither does be careful for nothing mean don't care at all, don't even think about it. Don't labor for this or for that thing because... Be careful for nothing. That's not the idea. But the worries and anxieties that are prohibited here are those worries and anxieties that proceed from distrust. So it has to do with the disposition of our minds and of our hearts. What is our frame of mind? And the kind of distrustful anxieties the Apostle says, be careful for nothing. And that word nothing is the first word in the text, in the original language. So it would read something like this. Nothing be careful for. Which means that he's emphasizing that. He's not allowing this or that pat anxiety or worry. But he's lumping them all together and he's saying nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Whereas we are prone to to worry about just about everything. The Apostle wraps it all up together with one word that admits of no compromise, and he says, nothing. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry, but pray, he says. And that's a very strong contrast there in the text. Be careful for nothing, but... Picture that word, but, in all capital letters there, underscored, italicized, but... In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving... Let your requests be made known unto God. That's a beautiful contrast. Don't worry, but pray. 